I was asked a couple of questions recently about sharing Google Calendars, so I thought I'd do a video showing you the ins and outs of how to do it and what the different permissions mean, so let's crack on. Now the first thing to point out is that you can't share calendars from the Google Calendar app on your phone, you have to do it through the web browser. So firstly make sure you're logged into your Google Calendar. Then we need to go to the sharing options. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. The first way is to go to your settings by clicking on the cogwheel in the top right corner here or using keyboard shortcut S which will take you through to your settings. Then scroll down to where it says settings for my calendars, click on the name of the calendar that you want to share and then go to share with specific people. Now the second way and probably the quickest way is when you're in the calendar view here, go over to the left hand side underneath where it says my calendars and hover over the name of the calendar you want to share, click on the three dots not to the right of it, go to settings and sharing and this will bring you to the calendar settings for that specific calendar and go to share with specific people. To start sharing your calendar with specific people all you need to do is click on add people and it's just a matter of typing in their email addresses and you can add as many email addresses in here as you like and then you set their permissions by clicking on the drop down arrow here next to where it says permission. So you have four options available. The first one is see only free and busy. So they won't see any details whatsoever. They just see a block of time that says you're busy. The next option is see all event details, which is pretty self-explanatory. They see everything, the description, the, the guests, everything that's included in the calendar is what they'll see. Next is make changes to events. So they see everything in the events and also get to make any changes to any event in your calendar from adding a guest to the event through to changing the event color. Any changes they make will automatically be updated in your own calendar. And the final option is make changes and manage sharing. So you can see the calendar is now moved to the my calendar section instead of other calendars and they can see everything. They can make changes to any events in the calendar and they can now also share the calendar with more people if they wish. So once you've decided on which permission you want to allocate to people, click on send and the people you've shared with will be listed down here. If you want to change their permission setting at any time, just click on the drop down arrow to the right of their name and make the change there. The recipient will also receive an email telling them that what their new permission setting is. Another thing to note is that if you've set an event as private in your calendar, I'll just go into this one, there's a section here where it says busy and you've got default visibility. If you click on the drop down arrow here, now, if you've set this as private in your calendar, then only those who have their permissions set to make changes to events or make changes to events and manage sharing can actually see the details. Everyone else sees the event just as busy. So if you have someone set as see all event details, then this event privacy setting here needs to be set as either default visibility or public in order for them to see the details. Google actually have a really helpful list of who can see what in the different privacy settings. So I'll include a link to this list in the description below. Also a quick note to make you aware that any changes you make in the calendar settings are automatically saved. So don't go looking around for a save changes button or anything. Now I've already shown you briefly what people see with the different permissions. So I'm now gonna show you what people can do with the calendar once you share it with them. So this could be helpful for you to know in case you need to explain it to anyone you're sharing your calendar with. So first they will receive an email saying that you're sharing the calendar with them. They will need to click on the link in the email where it says add this calendar. Once the calendar has been added, they need to scroll down to where it says other calendars on the left hand side and they should see the calendar that you've shared with them. If they want to hide the events of this shared calendar, they can simply untick the box to the left of the name and the events will disappear from the calendar view. They can recolor the calendar by clicking on the three dots to the right of it and choosing a different color. And depending on which permission you gave them, they may also be able to recolor individual events in the shared calendar. To hide the calendar from the list completely but stay subscribed to it, they need to click on the three dots to the right of the calendar name and choose hide from list. To get it back again, they need to go into their calendar settings by using keyboard shortcut S, scroll down to where it says settings for other calendars, and then click on the crossed out I to the right of the calendar name. Go back into the calendar, and the, the shared calendar will be back in the list again. If they want to unsubscribe from the calendar completely, they can click on the cross to the right of the name, and this will remove it completely from the list and you will be unsubscribed. So I've shown you there how to share just with specific people, but you can also make your calendar available to the public, 
which is what you would need to do if you wanted to share it with someone who doesn't have a Google account. So go back into your calendar settings by going to the three dots and settings and sharing. Click on access permissions for events. Then tick the box next to where it says make available to public. And this warning will come up saying that all events will be visible to everybody and can be found in Google search. If you're happy with that, click OK and then set your permissions. There's only two permissions available here so people can see only free and, or busy or they can see all event details. So when your calendar is public, anyone can subscribe to it and view it in their Google Calendar. They can also sync it with other applications if they want to. If you want to share your calendar as a link with other people, click on Get Shareable Link underneath and then copy the link and send it to whoever you want to be able to subscribe to your calendar. For anyone who doesn't have a Google account, make sure you've ticked the box next to make available to public first, then click on integrate calendar on the left hand side here and copy the public URL to this calendar by clicking in there, press Ctrl and C to copy. And then I'm just gonna open up an incognito window, a private window, so I'm not logged into Google or anything with this and I'm going to paste the calendar just so you can see what it looks like for anybody when you share the link with them who doesn't have a Google account. So you could see this is the calendar name, the date, and you can see all the slots here are down as busy because that was the setting that I set in the, in the public um, setting the public option that I had. I set everything as see only busy or free. Now the final sharing option I'm going to quickly show you is if you use Google Calendar through your business or school or work then you have the option of sharing the calendar with everybody in the organization. So to do this go into your calendar settings and click on access permissions for events and then tick the box where it says make available for and there'll be the organization name there. Then choose the permission from the two that are available. Once this is saved, this means that anybody in the organization can find your calendar, but people outside of the organization won't be able to see it. So that's pretty much sharing calendars in a nutshell. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And finally, if you have clients, customers, work colleagues, or friends and family located around the world, then it can be a bit of a nightmare trying to work out when's the best time to call, which is why you should watch this video next, where I share all you need to know about setting up different time zones in your Google Calendar. I really hope you found this video helpful. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.